Hello everyone and welcome back to Costreams TV. We got to do some more mythic beta raid testing and we started the day off by trying out Ulgarax the Devourer. So this is a two phase fight or technically one phase with an add intermission. Some of the major changes in mythic is now that the web the webbing that spawns under the boss will now stun you and trap you in hearted netting. You need to get broken out of this or you remain stunned for 30 seconds. And while you are trapped, you take damage every two seconds. So you really want to avoid the stuff on the ground. And the webs are actually a little hard to see. Sometimes we would have a pull where melee would get caught and it would actually get four or five melee in one spawn. So keep an eye out for those when you're doing this boss. Another change is the ad intermission. During this phase, as the boss is charging through the room, you're gonna get in a new ad. This new ad is called the Bile Soaked Spawn. This spawn can be taunted, but it is immune to all movement abilities. So you cannot grip it, you cannot pull it, you cannot ring a piece it. It gets taunted and it stays on the tank. These are your priority targets when you're doing Mythic. You wanna nuke them down as quickly as possible because they do a significant amount of damage to the tanks and the raid. So those are the two main mechanics that you now have to deal with in Mythic. Everything else is similar to normal and heroic. On pull, we end up taking the boss right out as far as we possibly can to the edge of the room. As he's getting pulled out there, he will spawn the webbings directly right after. The closer he is to the edge, and I think this is a bug right now, they will actually spawn off the edge, meaning you'll have less to deal with in the room. If anyone walks into these webs, they get the hardened netting and are stunned for 30 seconds and take damage every two seconds while in it. One thing that continues in this fight is you get the green AoE circles. You want to use those circles to clear the webbing on the floor because right after that, that he does a mechanic called Brutal Lashings. This is a, the tug of war that the boss does with you and you want to get that as far away from him as possible because the pull is actually pretty significant and it's an 8 yard range for him to devour you. So if you get too close, he will devour you. We set a marker significantly far from the room and we split the raid in half. So we had group 1 and 2 go to the first soak, group 3 and and four go to the second soak and those are the main mechanics in phase one webs all over the ground aoe circle to clear the webs and then he does the brutal lashings pull where, where either one or group one or two go and do the soak that is basically phase one on repeat and that brutal lashings mechanic we were using a roar a wind rush and as a death knight you can death advance it the boss then does his mechanic where he actually jumps into the middle of the room like he used to before. Be mindful of where you're standing because when he lands in the middle, he will still knock you back. And if he knocks you back into a web, you're stunned for 30 seconds. Around the room, there's going to be a whole bunch of eggs that spawn. You Basically, the whole raid is going to go over there and the tanks are going to pick up the new bile-soaked bile spawns. Those are the big ads and those are your priority. We actually used Lust in this phase, so we Lusted right as those came out and we nuke them down as quickly as possible. Once all the ads are dead, the boss spawns somewhere on the platform, and what you want to do is pick up the chunky visceras that are on the ground, and you want to run them over to the boss. There you get an extra action button, and you press it, and it'll actually cast the ability and throw it into the boss's mouth. That's how you satiate his hunger, and that is the one mechanic. And, and during this phase, if there's any ads up, you can't bring them to the boss because the boss will fear them away for two seconds. So you have to kill all of the ads that are in the room, pick up as many of the viseras as you can and feed the boss to get rid of his debuff once the debuff is gone the phase just repeats again now during the ad intermission you want to be mindful to be careful of the boss he just charges across the room and it's a random spawn it is telegraphed well so you can see it it's kind of like the razagath wins but way more visible there's he has a giant portal and then there's like blue waves that come through come across the ground so watch out for that just get out of the way and keep nuking the ads pick up pick up the food feed the boss and then their phase repeats that is it for the whole boss not the most challenging boss for phase one but definitely has the just the right amount of mechanics and just it does just the right amount of damage everyone gets to do a little bit of something definitely a really good first boss to kick off the new raid and the next boss we got to try out is the blood bound horror the primary new mechanic in, the, in this fight is called Blood Curdle. Blood Curdle is an AoE that goes on every single player 
that you just need to spread out for. And I think in myth in beta testing, it wasn't tuned properly because I was stacking it on other people and taking the no significant amount of damage. So on pull, the groups are split just like they were in heroic. And then most of the mechanics are the same. Like I said, you now just get the blood hurled on top of that. You actually get two more ads now when you transition into the second phase, so to speak, and get sent down into the beyond realm basically what happens two harbingers spawn next to each other and one will usually spawn across the map same thing you had in heroic where one spawned on each side of the map the tank that didn't go down actually wants to position themselves so that when they launch the spewing hemorrhage the beams that come out of the boss the group that has to run around the room to get to the furthest ad can can just follow the beam or have the time to actually kill the ad before the beam gets to them, right? So either spawn it right near them so they can backtrack to the ad or just before them so they can be on the other side. It is possible to get tentacles and blood curdle basically at the same time. Tentacles are fairly easy to deal with. You don't have to run across the room if you get them. You can take your time and just kind of move around slowly in a circle as they spawn. There's a lot of time between casts, so you don't have to worry about that. In the phase when you go down, you have to make sure that the little horror ads don't reach the boss. I think this is going to be one of those fights where you actually want to have at least two DKs or displacements like Ring of Peace, uh, Grips, anything that can pull the ads back to you to keep them away from the boss and tangling roots works because as soon as they hit the boss they pulse massive aoe damage now another mechanic that remains is gore splatter the giant aoe that the boss spawns in heroic continues to be there in mythic so same thing just run out of the room and then run back in and that is basically the whole fight so the recommendation here is split up your aid into two two groups have one on each side of the room and whatever one has the ad spawn on it, have that tank take the aggro and have that, that group get sent down, down into the other realm so they can focus on their ads. The fight felt really chaotic and like the mechanics didn't really work well together. It was really hard trying to figure out where to position yourself so that way when the beams come out the group that is down can get to the ad that's on the other side of the room it that was a major challenge every time two ads would spawn together one's on the other side of the room and you have to somehow figure out where is that group and where do they have to go to successfully be able to get to that third ad because all three harbingers are spawning the little horrors and if they get to the boss like we said it is a wipe and i tried to use ams as an unholy death knight and and the spewing hemorrhage actually kills you. So the beam AMS did not let me survive it. I immediately died. I don't think bops, turtles, or any of that's going to work. It will kill you right through it. Okay, what we did in our group is we killed the solo ad. And then we ran, followed the beam to the other two ads. Or that was what seemed to work for us. The biggest challenge, like I said, is having the tanks make sure that they actually position those beams correctly. So who knows, when there's some better coordination, maybe this boss will go a little better. But as of right now, I'm not too fond of this boss. For potential second boss, it is a good fight. I just feel like the mechanics need a little bit of tweaking or the, maybe the, the ads that spawn, having them a little closer together. But overall, it, it's okay. So we'll see how it plays out in live. And that was the second boss that we got to try out today. And when you thought a heroic boss couldn't get any better going into Mythic, we have Sikram. This boss is actually really cool. The main mechanic change in this is now the Simulacrums, the clones that you drop. If they are within five yards of each other, they immediately pulse massive AoE damage and it is an instant wipe to the raid. So what we did is on pull, we pulled the boss near the edge of the room where we put markers and our method was to create like a box. The other major change now is that instead of getting one set of the Simulacrum, so having four people get markers, and go off to the side usually you'd get the set and then you'd get a decimate to clear them now in mythic it's two sets so you get a set of phase blades that you that people have to take out and they have to position themselves within five yards so we we're trying to do a box mechanic to keep them from being too close so luckily we were in voice and we were actually able to get pretty significantly far into the first phase of this fight so it would be two of the phase blades and then we'd have the decimate mechanic so we were able to clear the first ones in this fight 
I think it's going to be very healer intensive because you will always have the boss actually destroy some of the simulacrums with the AoE ability that she does called Shattering Sweep. So regardless of what happens, you're going to have the boss blow up these clones. So I think you want to split this up into four and four. So with your decimate, maybe do four or five if you can, and then the boss will clear off the last three. Otherwise, there is so much damage going out. It, the dot pretty much wipes the raids, and we had a few where we did it at seven stacks, and there is no healing through it. Definitely a very healer intensive fight, but that is what this boss is. The tank mechanic in the fight is still the same. It's expose, expose, phase lunge. We want to taunt on the phase lunge. The biggest change here is, like I said, is now it's two sets of phase blades. So eight simulacrums go out and then you get the four decimates that you can use to clear the room. Rain of Arrows is still in the fight. And I think being able to know where to position yourself and making sure you're five yards apart is going to be a bit of a challenge early on in this fight. And I feel they may tune these numbers a little. The boss felt very good. The mechanics felt great, and I think they took an already good third boss and took it to the next levels with the changes they added with the simulacrums, those clones we're talking about. This is going to be a really fun fight, and as you keep clearing all of those clones, the room continues to fill up. The longer the fight goes, the less room you have. I think this is going to be a bit of a DPS check and definitely a healer check because of how much damage this boss does. The flow of the fight felt good. The mechanics are easy to see. They've added a couple things and they didn't really add anything new. There's no new mechanics outside of the five yard range with more of the clones and less of the decimates, meaning you really got to have the right strategy to ensure your healers can, can heal through the dot or put the clones too close. So yeah, definitely like this fight for a third boss this is fantastic it is going to be so much fun on live so those are the three mythic bosses we have to start off testing this week i think all grax and sikram are fantastic they have the right flow to them they feel good obviously tuning who knows it's beta for a reason we're just testing bloodbound horror i still think that fight's a bit of a mess but anything can change when this goes live. Overall, fantastic new bosses so far in, in the Nubarar Palace. I'm looking forward to when this does go live. Until then, thank you guys so much for watching. Hit the like and subscribe button. I'm trying to get my journey up to at least 1,000 subscribers. So if you want to hit that subscribe button, it would help me out a lot. So anyway, thank you guys again. Have a fantastic night, and I'll see you guys on the next one.